Well, hey everyone and welcome back. You know, one of the worst feelings in the world is when someone starts explaining something to you and it's confusing enough as is, but then they introduce a whole new concept that you had no clue existed, and they start using that to explain their previous points. You know, it just gets you real confused. But I realized I was guilty of that in a few of my videos in which I talked about topographic profiles um, with regards to cross-sectional diagrams, strike and dip, um, and probably a few other things, I mentioned them here and there. So I figured I'd just make a video uh, detailing basically what a topographic profile is, why they use contour lines, and maybe a few other applications. We'll see if we'll see if we get there. But a topographic profile, well, as you can probably tell, it comes from the word topography. which simply refers to the natural and artificial features of an area. Now, there are a whole bunch of things to dive into on topographic profiles, but particular to geology, that's what this entire series is about, um, they're particularly important in looking at the heights of at the surface level, um, the height of the ground, and we can use that to deduce the height of uh, strata and get the vertical thickness from that. Um, so one of the things particularly important to us are what are known as contour lines, which contour lines just show, uh, geez, running out of space to write this already, contour lines show height. And you'll see them incremented. Usually each contour line represents a certain height, uh, a new height, and they'll be incremented by certain numbers, maybe 10, 100, um, and then insert your unit there, whether it be feet, meters, anything like that. So just to give you an example, some contour lines might look something like this, if you've got them on a, on a map here. And then these ones will kind of, well, we'll have one more in the center, I guess. And then these ones will kind of loop back around. And then maybe this one comes out here. So this kind of just looks like a concentric, uh, kind of interesting design forced into this square box here. But what this actually shows, um, contour lines typically show, as I said, different heights. So we could say that this one right here, let's just give that a height of 10. We don't need to worry about uh, units for now. And we'll increment it at the next one to 20. So two contour lines next to each other never have the same height. Um, they'll always be going up or down. So the next one could be 30, this one 40, this one 50, and this one 60. You get the idea. And um, the idea was that these two lines aren't their own separate lines. Um, they kind of connect off off the diagram here. So this one is 40 and this one is 30. Um, but yeah, these contour lines just so show height. They show lines of equal height. So everywhere along on this 10 contour line, if we were to imagine it stretching out and going around this outside of this box, all the surface located on that line is at 10 feet or meters high. Same with the 20 one. Same with the 30. Same with the 40. Then the 50 and the 60 are mostly all on the box or within the box. So you can see that it's kind of like this circle around here. It's all at a uniform elevation of 50 units. You know, we'll, we'll just say this is, this is meters, uh, just so I don't have to keep repeating that. 50 meters above sea level. And then 60, this circle is entirely 60 meters, and then in the middle it might go up, it might go down a little bit, 
we're not too concerned about it. Whatever it is, we know it doesn't go up to 70 or down to 50 at any point. Otherwise, we would have marked it. Um, so what I've drawn here is actually a very typical um, drawing of what would be either a hill or a mountain or, you know, just, just a, 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 a piece where the land raises. Um, because what you're seeing here is actually, you know, this would be like the peak, the tip of the hill, the top of the mountain. It's probably not a mountain if it's only 60 meters high. Um, but this is the top of our little hill, and then it just goes down, gradually sloping. Um, and you can see the distance between the lines is pretty uniform, meaning there aren't any places of very steep uh, drop-offs or extremely gradual, almost flat surfaces. If we wanted a hill that looked more like that, then we could edit this picture. Let's say we, we keep 60 right there. Just sort of erase around it. So if we keep 60 there, let's say 50 is right there barely any distance between them. Then let's say 40 is like that. And then 30 is like that. But then 20, let's say, is more like that. And then 10, maybe we don't even see on the picture. So you can see that because there's barely any uh, distance between these on the overhead view, you know, if we had a little scale here um, for size, maybe this entire thing is uh, one kilometer, then, you know, we'd be seeing very quick drop-offs in, in uh, height between the 60, the 50, then the 50, and the 40, um, then the 40, and the 30. But then it gets much larger here, and we get this more gradually sloping, gradually dipping, to use our geology terms, um, land. And then even more gradual as we go from 20 to 10, which we can assume means it's leveling out with the rest of the land. Easy enough, right? And I'll just use this picture once again just to show you another thing that can happen. If we wanted to show a depression in the land, well, simple enough, it would just start at, let's say that's just 10, that's 20, that's 30, that's 40, and that's 50. Then you can see it's the opposite. We're just going as we go inward in the diagram. Uh, we get lower and lower until we reach this point. Maybe there's the absolute lowest point right in the center, I don't know. Um, but yeah, just the reverse of a hill, going downwards instead of upwards. Now there's one final thing I do want to detail. Since this is a geology-based uh, channel, I think it is important to talk about um, something you'll see that isn't quite a topographic profile, though it does take the contour lines. Like I said, geologists really love those contour lines. So, I don't know if you would call this a, an upgraded uh, topographic profile or something entirely different. Usually I just hear it called a geologic map or like a top-down view, I don't know. There's probably an exact name for it. Uh, the names of the specific maps are all leaving me right now. I'll probably uh, put in a little blurb saying, oh yeah, this, this is what it is. But, um... We use the contour lines, but we also uh, show different strata at the surface. So we could have something like this. Maybe we've got you know, just, just some strata lines going across. They don't have to look perfectly, uh, perfectly uniform or straight or anything. Maybe we've got strata A, strata B, strata C, and strata D. Right, so many times on these maps, the thick, the thicker lines will be the um, the 
uh, boundaries between the two between two different strata. Meanwhile, you'll see dashed lines to show contour lines um, showing different heights. So we could see something like, I don't know, maybe this one's not a hill. Maybe it's just all part of Well, the entire picture is not a hill, but maybe it's just all part of a the side of a mountain or something, and we're getting steeper and steeper. So, you know, maybe here's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and it just looks something like that. Um, so, yeah, just remember on these types of maps, um, the dashed lines will always be, or in most cases, unless otherwise said, will be the contour lines and the uh, thicker lines will be the, the thick full lines will be the boundaries between two different strata. And of course, um, it goes without saying, but if there's a number next to a line, then it, it's going to be the contour line no matter what. Um, although I will mention that not every uh, contour line that you'll see will have numbers next to it. For example, in many cases where contour lines are so close together, it would be just ridiculous to try to draw numbers in all those places. So we could make this more realistic and kind of get rid of these. So we just have 10 and 50 here. Actually, it would probably be more appropriate to have 0 and 50. So we'll just say that's our 0 line right there. So maybe there, it only mentions the number every 50 uh, 50 meters you go up or down, but you know, you can just interpolate and say that, well, since this is 0 and this is 50, this line is closest to 0, therefore it must be 10, this one would be 20, this one would be 30, this one would be 40, then this one would be 50. Just a more realistic look at many topographic profiles. Um, and yeah, as far as geology goes, this is mostly what we're concerned with. Obviously, you'll see a lot more on real topographic profiles will never look quite this uh, bare bones and simple. But those are the main important points I wanted to talk about. Uh, now I can stop feeling terrible, just terrible about having, having to bring this stuff up without actually having made a video on it myself. So hopefully you guys enjoyed, hopefully it was informative, otherwise good review, and I will see you all in the next video.